Hi guys, welcome to this video. It's uh, another one of those where Matt answers ragdoll related questions <laughs> <laughs> and Mon is asking or you're asking. Um, I guess everyone is asking and I'm answering. So let's do this. I think everyone interested in ragdolls would be having these questions. Uh, so today we are going to talk about ragdoll myths or rather things that you can find online about ragdoll personalities that may or may not be true. So what we're doing in today's video, we are going to go over things that I found online, uh, things that I have come across in my previous research before we got cats, um, and things that you will definitely come across when you search um, things about ragdolls. And we will base our answers on Pixie and Bluebell and on any other information from you guys or our friends, breeders, uh, that we know that is true. Okay, hit me with the first one. The first one is a very well-known one. Um, ragdolls go limp and relaxed when picked up. Yeah, I can definitely confirm that's totally true. And we tested that in our previous video and uh, we compared Pixie and Bluebell on the floppiness scale. So you can go and check it out. It's uh, super cool. And uh, well, I highly recommend you do that with your own cat <laughs> because it works well. <laughs> and I guess we should probably show you in this video as well. So we're just gonna go and pick up a ragdoll each. Okay, so we had to um, take them out of the balcony and they may not be the happiest because they just love sitting out on the balcony, especially in this weather. Yeah, Pixie uh, wants to go outside yeah, again. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, but you can see that Bluebell is pretty relaxed. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to go back on the balcony. But, yeah. the, but the point stands, they do go floppy and uh, limp, so you can pretty much do anything with them, especially when they're sleepy. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> obviously now they want to go back on the balcony, but hey, it's true. So, next one. Ragdolls are easy to handle lap cuts. No, that's not true. So, sometimes Pixie will come and like sit on Mon's laps, but I've never really had a time where like Bluebell or Pixie would come to me and like sit on a lap. Even sometimes when they were very little and we actually tried to put them on the lap, uh, they wouldn't stay on. Yeah. So um, I don't think it, ap yeah. it applies to all the cats. We read sometimes comments that um, your cats or like our subscribers' cats uh, do sit on the laps, but I don't think it's like a, like a thing that all of the ragdolls do. Yeah, it definitely is personal and I don't think it will depend on the breed at all. Um, in fact, I have found contradiction information that says that ragdolls are not lap cats at all. So if you do get one that is happy to sit on your lap, you are going to be very lucky. <laughs> ragdolls follow you around everywhere like a fluffy shadow looking for attention. <laughs> <laughs> did you write this question? <laughs> um, I kind of did, yeah. I just changed them a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I'll cut to the chase. Uh, yes, totally true, um, especially in the morning. Uh, I can, I can, well, I, I'll talk about Pixie because she's just a <laughs> perfect example of this. So whenever I wake up in the morning and go to the kitchen to make coffee, she just follows me around, uh, instantly jumps on the counter because she wants to get her morning pet time. Then if I go to the bathroom or to the balcony or back to the bed, for example, she just follows me around. And yeah. it's not like she she lets me out of her sight, so like she'll follow me in a second. She's literally like, you know, 50 centimeters behind me, just walking <laughs> behind me. <laughs> so Definitely. it is super cool. <laughs> yeah, and um, with the bathroom thing, I think that comes to all ragdolls. I have heard that from every single ragdoll cat owner, that you cannot just go to the bathroom on your own if you <laughs> own a ragdoll. So just keep that in mind. I think it is very sweet, but... Yeah, you, yeah, you lose your privacy. You have to get used yeah. to it. It was very, very awkward <laughs> to start with, let's just say. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> they are friendly, sociable and dependent, but they are not aggressive. Yes, so sociable, soft and sweet. Yes, very much so. Every time we have friends, uh, they are, well, instantly they take the, all the attention. So yeah. <laughs> it feels like friends don't come to see us, they come to see our cat because they know like, um, I don't know, I don't have that much experience with any other cats, but all yeah. the experience I have, 
cats aren't very happy to be touched by like strangers or like petted by strangers and it's actually quite the opposite with our cats so pixie is a little bit more um to herself and needs few minutes to adjust to a new person but obviously has nothing against like being petted and bluebo just instantly comes up to the people that come to our house yeah. and you know just gives them head bumps and you know rubs on them so yeah. uh, they're instantly part of the family <laughs> they just greet everyone that walks through the door even the man that delivers our um a washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> Ragdolls don't jump and would rather stay on the floor than somewhere higher. No, I don't think that one's true. Uh, Bluebell very often climbs on the net that we use to cut <laughs> through the balcony yes. and he's just always on it, whether there's like a square outside or like a fly flying past. Uh, so yes, they definitely jump a lot. Uh, Pixie often makes a jump from the, uh, well, from the ground level uh, to the middle uh, level of the cat tree, which yeah, is like here. So that's like, that. I don't know, a meter and a half high. Um, yeah. Same like I just said earlier about uh, Pixie jumping on the kitchen counter whenever I go to the kitchen in the morning. Yeah. Again. Uh, um, but I would just note that um, they don't jump very, very high. So um, you can find cats a lot of the time sitting on top of their um, fridge or like <laughs> on top of their kitchen cupboards. So our cats don't do that. They don't jump as high so they will probably jump to maybe like our eye level yeah. i'd say like our height yeah um unless it's blue ball climbing the net and the yeah. <laughs> but yeah they don't jump as high as some other cats would yeah. but they definitely do jump and that's a good thing guys because that yeah. means we don't have to clean on top of the kitchen counters <laughs> <laughs> as often <laughs> <laughs> nice save mom <laughs> Ragdolls have a silky soft coat. Yeah, that was true. Just straight up true. <laughs> that whenever, is true. Yeah, whenever you so whenever you touch them, it's just like touching a cloud, guys. Yeah. Uh, that's the closest comparison I can give you. Just go touch a cloud. That's a <laughs> ragdoll. <laughs> oh, you want my juice now? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, the next one ties in with the previous one. Um, ragdolls coat tangles and mats easily. Um, yes and no. So our cats, we never had any problem with tangling or anything like this. It's actually always very soft and you can run your fingers through the coat. Mm -hmm. Never st uh, like They never get like stuck. But we see many pictures online and I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's diet, maybe how often uh, they are brushed. But we do see like the bellies being a little bit tangled and like yeah. matted. So I don't know. Like it really depends on the cat, I think. I think that the biggest reason would probably be diet. Uh, but yeah, with our cats, even if we don't brush them for a few days, um, their coat doesn't matter at all. Uh, the only place where they do get tangles is around their mane. Mm. So when they clean themselves and just like get their fur stuck in their mouth, sometimes it tangles, but it's literally just in one place. Other than that, it's absolutely yeah. fine. Ragdolls are quiet cats, not very vocal. <laughs> no, wait, let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. No, that's a big lie. They are the most vocal cats I know. Like, yeah. well, I don't know that many cats, but like they talk all the time. <laughs> so they are by far the loudest and the noisiest. We'll play some clips now. Hello. Oh, you're so quiet and not vocal at all. Mm, because you're a rag though. <laughs> and back to the video. Uh, so as you saw on this video, this isn't just like me trying to find a good moment when they like making a sound. It's literally them all the time. So whenever they're on the balcony, as you saw, they just like call you to come and pet them on the balcony or Bluebo by the door to come and pet him there because they yeah. need attention. Pixie talking to you yeah. when you get up in the morning. So they just talk all the time. Or when they jump, they just make cute sound like Meh. Yeah. <laughs> Ragdolls are easygoing with that's just life attitude. Yeah, so very true. Um, 
for example, if you pick up one of the cats, um, one of our cats, and for example, move it into another place <laughs> in the same position, they're just going to stay there mm -hmm. and not move anywhere else because they just accept it. <laughs> not even sleeping. Like if I pick up Bluebell and put him somewhere else in the same position, he's just going to stay there. <laughs> yeah. Next one. They are affectionate without being demanding. Mm, yes and no. So they are affectionate <laughs> a lot uh, and they are demanding uh, yeah. a lot. <laughs> so yeah. like I mentioned earlier, they they are very like noisy and well, maybe not noisy, like they vocal, vocal yeah. um, when they want to be petted uh, or when they want to play because they need some stimulation. So uh, they are they are demanding. You do have to spend enough time with a cat. So you have to make a very, very educated decision whether you want a rag or a cat in general because you know you have to probably spend as much time with other cat breeds and um, they might be just not as quick to point it out or like vocalize yeah. it um, yeah. that they need the attention yeah and they definitely do that they would uh, meow walk between your feet just do you give you love bites <laughs> yeah so love bites are when they just kind of like bite on your leg a little bit so it's, it's not a bite but it's, they just kind of like yeah they kind of grab it and let go instantly yeah it's kind of cute scratch it with their teeth <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but you don't actually hurt. get scratches yeah no it doesn't hurt at all but they just literally want you to like pay attention to them <laughs> hello i'm here <laughs> This one is quite an important one, uh, and we did get questions about that one. Um, and that one is that ragdolls are hypoallergenic. Uh, so, Mon told me about this, explained this properly the other yeah. day actually. So, yes and no. Uh, ragdolls don't have the undercoat that most cats have, and many people are allergic to. But actually, most people are allergic to the saliva and something else saliva and um and dander so like yeah. yeah okay so saliva and dander so um yes and no you won't be allergic to the mm. undercoat but you can be allergic to the cat's saliva yeah. so it depends um, like what yeah. you are actually allergic to uh even if you don't let your cat lick you they just clean themselves over and over again so as soon as you touch mm. their coat there might be saliva on them and that can be um an allergen potentially yeah. yeah funny story um perfect example so i used to have dogs and um, we quickly found out that I was actually allergic to the fur or well rather undercoat and um, i told that mom to mom when we were getting the cats but as you can see we still got the cats Turns out it was me or the cats. We're still here. <laughs> so luckily, I'm not allergic to the saliva. I was allergic to the undercoat. Just a Good lesson, guys. <laughs> Keep in mind. Because ragdolls are very social and need a lot of human attention, they shouldn't be left alone for long periods of time. Well, that's a tricky one. I don't think you should leave any animal for like extended periods of time yeah. alone because would you like to be, you know, at home alone for extended periods of time? Think about the lockdown, guys. Yeah, You've spent so much cool. time in the house. Did you like it? I don't think so. So, if you do have a, you know, very, very long working hours where you don't work from home and your partner works similar hours and you have to leave your cat alone, I would highly consider getting two cats. Um, mm -hmm. We we kind of overlap with work so we do have to leave the cats for about six hours a day alone um, and that's why we made it well that's one of the reasons why we made a decision to get two of them so they can kind of entertain each other <laughs> yeah. while we're not here yeah definitely a lot of people do say um that oh cats just sleep all day anyway um but that doesn't matter like they will sleep if they are bored as well uh, so they do need stimulation and if they are left alone for a long period of time and then you come back home and you just want to relax and just don't want to you know have many responsibilities you have to remember that you will have to take care of this cat play with it and just give it your attention as well <laughs> this one i have come across a lot of the times during my research and it is that ragdolls need a special diet I think all of the cats need special diets, so um, it doesn't matter whether it's a cat or lizard or parrot 
or ragdoll or like a different breed of a cat, they need to be fed species appropriate diet. Now, which diet you choose for your cat, it's going to depend on obviously, you know, what your beliefs are. You probably know if you're watching our channel that we feed our cats raw diet because we think that's the most species appropriate diet. And um, one example I'm going to give you now um, that kind of made me think about it and like suggested that we should go with this diet. If you think about like big cats that live in the jungle, they would go and hunt the prey and they would eat purely meat and yeah. the meat would be raw and that's kind of what made me think why are people feeding cats like dry meat or something yeah. it, it kind of doesn't make sense mm -hmm. so yes you do have to feed them special diets yeah so cats are obligate carnivores that means that they don't need any vegetables fruit or anything like that in the diet just meat train Ragdoll kittens can get upset tummies, especially with change in diet. Mm, I don't think, yeah, yes, but I don't think it's restricted to only ragdoll um, cats. Um, I know that because uh, I used to own dogs and whenever we would change a diet to like, especially puppies, they like, they very, they, ve they need time to like get used to new food and I assume it's the same with, yeah. with ragdolls or like cats in general yeah. um so whenever they introduce like new food and it can cause a bit of a diarrhea or something like this um but it's only like initial uh, moments yeah when they is. get used to the new food ragdolls always greet you at the door yeah that was true straight up <laughs> <laughs> we'll just show you a little clip of that as well <laughs> they always do Ragdolls tend to be larger than most cat breeds. Yep, I think that's true when you compare it to like a regular cat that's not like a regular cat. Um, for example, when we picked up Pixie and Bluebell from uh, breeders, they were talking about the males that they have weighing about 10 or 11 kilograms. So that is massive. That's like a, that's like a medium sized dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Pixie and Bluebell are not that big. Um, Bluebell is about four and a half, just under five kilograms, and Pixie is about four kilograms. Um, in general, males will be around six kilograms. So um, they are smaller than Maine Coons, but they're definitely bigger than most other cat breeds. Hello, this is Editing Matt from the future. I just finished putting the video together and I realized that we forgot one very important myth, which is ragdolls don't shed. I can tell you straight away that one's a myth. We have to brush our cats every other day at least and we actually hoover every single day in the morning because there is some shedding on the floor regardless of whether it's shedding season or not. So that one's a big myth. Ragdolls are lazy and don't really like to play or run around. They are slow runners. No, so so again, it depends on the time. Like if they in a sleepy mood, yeah, you can you can do whatever you want with the toy around them. They will just sleep. But when it, when it comes to playtime, they are very agile, very fast, and yeah, they definitely not slow runners. No, that's, that's a big especially when they're running around the house having. Oh, some there we go. Bluebo is just duty. on the net now. <laughs> oh, hello, Mister. Yeah, I just thought it was a great opportunity <laughs> to show you. That he anyway, back to the video. So yeah, uh, they do. They can run very fast. Um, to be fair, it's actually so fast that whenever I want to record it, they just like... It's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> they can easily learn tricks and react to their names. Yes, uh, they definitely react to the name. Um, uh, Pixie is actually very good with tricks. She's learned to play the free cap game. The one, well, we did a video on this. So you put three caps upside down, you put a treat in one of them, and then she has to hit it with a paw after you've mixed it to get a treat. Uh, so she can do that, pretty cool. And now I'm teaching her to react to her name to actually come to you. And another thing we training is um, whenever you like tap on the surface, uh, she has to jump on it. Yeah. So, so yeah. Pixie is definitely easier to train than Bluebell. Uh, Bluebell is a bit more relaxed and he will do things when he wants to, but yeah. if he doesn't want to, he will just pretend that you, you didn't call him at all. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, another one that ties in with that is you can teach them to play fetch. Yes, so I, I don't know how it happened, 
but Blue will sometimes fetch us. Yeah. Uh, we didn't manage to get on a camera really because he only does it like three, four, up to five times. And, and by yeah, by the time you realize, oh my god, he's fetching, uh, <laughs> he stops. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he does fetch. It's actually really yeah. cool. <laughs> with small toys or sometimes with stick toy as well. With the stick toy, he will just do it twice and then it's like yeah. You know. But he loves um, to do it with like um you know those little spring toys like yeah. like ten p from Alibaba or Ali AliExpress. Or uh, yeah, he just loves to run after them and like brings it back to you yeah so it's pretty it's cool so fun uh but yeah we didn't really like teach him to do it he just started doing it yeah okay so um a lot of the cats actually get attached to like one person so they choose one person mm. uh so apparently ragdolls can get attached to multiple people as opposed to choosing a favorite Okay, I think um, I think that's a myth because <laughs> Pixie. Ah, I hate to say this, but uh, she just loves me. Not gonna she lie, does. she loves She just comes to so me, head bumps me all the time, and don't get me wrong. She she obviously loves Mon, uh, but she whenever I'm in in doubt that she <laughs> if she actually loves me, she she does come and like gives me kisses and yeah. head bumps. But that happens like. Not as often. Yeah, it's pro yeah. it's actually most often when Mon is alone in the house, then yeah. Pixie will be like very affectionate towards her. But yeah. whenever we're in the house together, um, it's yeah, you she kind of leans towards me. <laughs> but I don't know on why. the other hand, I'd say that Bluebell is more of like everyone's He's very cat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't get attached to people. He just wants slaves. He's got multiple <laughs> slaves. <laughs> Ragdolls have beautiful blue eyes. Yeah, that's true. That yeah. is so true. Straight up. Um, Just check out the Instagram, Pixie and Bluebell, <laughs> and uh, you can see even can Pixie's see eye uh, yeah. really close up, like a few posts back. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you'll find it. Blue eyes. Hello, Mr. Blue eyes. Yeah, they are blue. Confirmed. So just an extra note that there is mink ragdolls, solid ragdolls or sepia ragdolls so they will have a little bit different colouring and their eyes are actually more of like aqua blue colour. Still blue. Still blue but a little bit more greenish. Next one is that ragdolls play without their claws. Yeah so obviously when they were kittens they still used claws and uh, we did get a few scratches when they were very, very little but they grew out of it very quickly. So yeah. like when they when they catch a toy, obviously they they will sometimes catch it with the with the claws and like hold on to it. But um, I I don't think they use claws much. Like yeah, definitely no. not as much as other cats. Like if you're playing with them and they just like pull your hand, there is no claw at yeah. all. So yeah, definitely a lot. Like that's why they're considered more safe for children as well because they are a little bit more gentle when playing. Yeah. But obviously that also comes down to your training and how strict you are course, with not yeah. playing with hands when they are little. So uh, don't play with hands people. Yeah, we did a video um, all about how to play with your cat and we'll link it up here as well for you. Yeah, on this side. Oh, it's this side. I know which side it is now. <laughs> and the last one that I have on my list today is ragdolls should be kept indoors. Yes, I think that one is definitely true because they are so friendly that if you let it out uh, and somebody picks them up because they will go towards them to be petted uh, they're just gonna get nicked yeah i think people will just steal them and i think there's a i don't know if it's a myth or true but apparently ragdolls aren't very good with um directions and like awareness of like where they are much like mon <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but yes, apparently they, they might not find their way back. So it's best to keep them indoors or um, have like a designed area, designated area for them. Yeah. So like we have a cat proof balcony, you can cat proof your um, garden or have a catio as well so that they're safe and they don't, yeah. Yeah, they can't. I would escape. definitely suggest keeping ragdolls indoors well yeah. indoors ideally with like outside space but yeah. that the space that is designed for them yeah. don't just like keep them yeah. inside or you can take them out on a lead as well yeah we do that too it's pretty cool you get weird looks but it's still cool and they love it well bluebo does pixie is too, do too domesticated yeah. she doesn't like a feeling of like anything else than like hardwood floor and the head paws <laughs> 
So as you can see, some of the things that you can find on the internet that are considered ragdoll traits can apply to some cats but not others. So some apply to Pixie but not Booba or other way around or some are just totally untrue in our experience. Um, so we hope this helped you guys if you had any questions like this or if you wondered if a ragdoll cat is a good cat for you. Um, but if you do have any other questions that we didn't answer in this video, anything that you've read online that you wonder if it's true or not, of course ask us down below and we'll try to answer all of them for you. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!